What's up guys, my name is Kenji and I hope you're having a wonderful day. So one of my most recent videos, I spoke to you guys about how I got to medical school without the best grades. But in this video, I'm going to give you guys a bit more detail about um, what I got in terms of my GCSEs, my A-levels, um, my degree classification, my UK cap, my work experience, and also lastly, a bit about my um, extracurricular activities as well. So starting off um, with my GCSEs, if you guys aren't from the UK, GCSEs basically stands for General Certificate of Secondary Education. And it's basically the grades you get at the end of your um, year 11 in your secondary school or high school. In my GCSEs, I ended up getting uh, two A stars. I got five A's and I got two B's. Um, so as you can see, I didn't get straight A stars. And you don't necessarily need straight A stars for medicine. However, what they do normally ask for is, uh, or what they more concentrate on, is your grades in English, science and maths. And they normally ask for either an A or a B, depending on what university you apply to. So again, you don't need all the best grades at GCSEs. Um, GCSEs are important, but they're not necessarily the most important part of the application. But again, it does just depend on what university you want to apply to. So in terms of my A-levels, um, A-levels is basically um, the grades you get at the end of your um, secondary school or your high school. Um, so it's normally in year 12 and year 13. As I told you guys in one of my last videos, um, I ended up getting ABB. So I got an A in maths, I got a B in biology, a B in chemistry, um, and I also got an A in AS for the maths. And again, these aren't the best grades. If you want to know more about how to get into medical school without the best grades, particularly if you're a postgraduate um, or if you're a bit older, you have more qualifications, please go check out my other video. But normally during your A levels, um, they normally ask for at least AAA, and the majority of times they do ask for um, these grades in at least the chemistry, biology and maths but again it does depend on what university you want to go to but generally it's usually at least chemistry, maths and biology sometimes as well. But if you want to know more about um, what in each individual university wants go ahead to their websites and check out um, exactly what they need under their entry requirements and that will tell you exactly what grades, grades you need to be aiming for and what subjects you need to do as well. So those are my A-levels. Um, in terms of my degree, if you guys haven't watched my last videos, I did biomedical science so in my biomedical science degree, I end up getting a first class degree. You don't necessarily need a degree to, to do medicine in the UK. I know some countries like um, America do require a kind of pre-med phase and they require you to have another degree first. So yeah, so you don't necessarily need a degree to get into medicine, but that's just what I did. So on to my UK cat. Uh, in my UK cat, I got 740 in quantitative reasoning. I got um, 670 in abstract reasoning and I got 520 in verbal reasoning. And I also got um, band one in situational judgment. So I think that averages to about 640 overall. And again, that's not the best score. I was far from the best score. I know a lot of people got over 700. Um, but that's just what I got. Normally a UK CAT score does depend on what university you want to go to. To be safe, I'd normally say aim for anywhere above 700. If you do get 700 or above, it is extremely likely that you will get interviewed depending on the rest of your application. I know some universities just have a cut-off cut score where they just um, immediately reject you if you don't get a certain level. Um, so do have a look at the university's websites. I'll give you a bit more detail about um, what you can get score you need. My own personal experience, what I would say is try and get at least 600. If you're a bit safer, I'd say get the mid 600s. And if you want to be extra, extra safe, um, try and aim for above 700. But obviously, just do as best as you possibly can. But the UKCAT is one of the most important um, parts of your application. So do make sure you spend at least maybe uh, two, three weeks. So I think um, I spent about three weeks revising over summer uh, to sit this exam. And I think the UKCAT isn't necessarily about how smart you are. Although of course, do well, you have to be um, somewhat smart. But I think the UKCAT does have a lot to do with how much you practice. So make sure you do set um, aside some time, like two or three weeks to just sit down and practice the UK cap. So in terms of the voluntary work I did and the um, the work experience I did, normally for medicine, they ask for around three things. Um, it's normally a GP that you need to do. So you need to have at least one GP placement. You need to have a hospital placement and it also needs some sort of long-term uh, voluntary role as well. I had two one-week hospital placements. Uh, the first one was in neurosurgery and the second one was in liver medicine. Um, so yeah, so these lasted about one week each and I was just able to see different aspects of the, the hospital. So I was in the clinic um, I was in the theatre and I was also on the wards as well. So that gave me a really good understanding and a really good uh, background of the hospitals and how they work. So in the hospitals, I was mainly just shadowing uh, surgeons and shadowing doctors and that gave me so much experience. And one of my stations in my medical school interview was um, entirely based on um, the work experience I did. So work experience is um, absolutely essential. So another thing that I did was um, a long-term volunteering role. So I basically volunteered in a hospice for around um, one year. And one of my roles was to basically get food um, from the kitchen, ask the patients what they'd like to eat, um, bring the food over to them and help, you know, help feed them, uh, talk to them, read them stories, read them books, colour with them, and just kind of be someone who could listen to their worries um, and just help look after them. Medical schools always want you to have a long-term volunteering role, and that's just what I did. Um, 
but you can do long-term volunteering in hospital as well. So you can just help around hospitals, kind of um, do like a healthcare assistant role. Um, yeah, healthcare assistant is something else um, you might want to look into. And it's basically a, a job where you do have a caring role within the hospital. So what I did is just call up hospice, um, all the local hospices in your area, and just say that you'd like to volunteer um, and just provide um, some help to them. So I worked in hospice once a week, and that really taught me so much and helped me so, so much in terms of my uh, medical school interview. So in terms of GP placement, I didn't actually manage to get one myself, but I would definitely um, highly recommend that you guys try and get one. So I'll just call up your local GP and ask if you can come in uh, maybe you know one or two hours a week um, just to see what it's like to be within a GP consultation. Now on to the fun stuff. Um, yeah, so extracurriculars is an aspect of the application which is normally overlooked, but it is really, really important. Extracurricular activities show that you're not just a person who's in the books, you actually have a life and you can actually um, enjoy yourself and have fun as well. And there's a number of um, skills within these extracurricular activities that you can actually apply in being a doctor as well. So in terms of what I did, um, I played football for my local team. Um, I also mentioned uh, that I played guitar in my application. I also worked as a chef in my local Mexican restaurant, which is uh, really, really important because it showed them I have a number of transferable skills that I can apply, like um, you know, working as part of a team, uh, working under pressure and stuff like that as well. I also did a bit of research as well. Um, so I worked for two months in my local lab over summer and I got funding from the Wellcome Trust. Um, as I said, you don't need to do this, this is just what I did because I was really into um, research as well. I also had a number of roles within my university, um, so you know, hopefully you have some roles in your school as well. So if you're a prefect or if you're part of some kind of um, organisation or social organisation within your school, uh, definitely mention that. Um, but in terms of what I did, I was an ambassador for my school, so whenever we had open days and people would come in to see our university, I'd show them around and I'd also give some lectures to the students and to their parents as well about what my university is about and just basically encourage them to come to my university. I was also part of an, uh, a number of outreach programs. Um, so basically I was part of a team uh, within my university that used to go out to different schools in Birmingham and encourage them to take up um, further education. I also explain what my university is about, uh, what my course is about and just encourage them to, uh, to go on to do further education. I was also the um, student media and student um, technology ambassador of my course. My job was to basically set up a Facebook page uh, where I'd invite people who want to go to, to my university to study my degree to basically ask questions if they have any um, and try and promote my, my, my programme. So as I said, every person is different and um, this is what I did. In terms of my extracurricular activities, you can have whatever. So you can play sports, you can play piano, you could um, be part of different societies, organisations. Uh, you might like reading. This is just a place for you to shine and show some of your personality because a lot of people who apply for medicine will have good grades. Um, they will have good work experience. This is a, um, you know, an area of the, the personal statement or an area of your application where you can be yourself and really show what you're about. So thank you so much for watching guys. I hope this has been somewhat helpful and somewhat informative. Um, I hope it's also given you a bit of a taste as to what you know, an app, a medicine application should look like. Um, as I said, this is, you don't need all of these things. You, you don't need uh, to have the same grades as me. This is just what I did. And I hope this has just given you a bit more of an insight into the application process. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to comment down below. Um, please also subscribe to my channel. Um, I have a new video coming out, which is gonna be um, a day in the life of a medical student at King King's College London. Please subscribe to, um, to stay up to date for that. Uh, please like the video. And like I said, if you have any comments at all, um, any questions, please feel free to comment down below. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Did you see what I done? Came in a black Benz, left in the white one. I'm just a hoodlum, I came in my bones, how many niggas wanna try something?